In today's video, we are going to be unboxing our brand new 2022 Faber Laser Label Mark machine. We're going to be unboxing, assembling, comparing this new unit to our old one. And once we've done that, we're going to be going over a couple of settings on our brand new software that comes with this machine. So let's get to taking this thing out of its box. So now that we have completely unboxed it and we've gotten everything away, now I can start seeing what is actually here and start piecing this thing together until we've got a completely built machine. So let's go ahead and do it. First thing I can see here is a lovely Allen key set that is provided, which we're going to need to assemble this machine as via the past. So that is always something nice to have. Take that out. Next thing we've got here is our main connection cable to our computer, which we're going to need in order to send data towards our machine. So that is very important. And the piece that we have underneath is the main bracket that sits on our bed that will hold up our, our arm and support structure. Then we have got our pedal, which will also connect into our main uh, unit here. And this will allow you to activate the job with your foot just in case you need to be holding something or you don't feel like going back to the computer and pushing start. So that is very nifty to have. And then we have got our main connection for our power. And then inside here, we have got these bracket arms that we are gonna use as technically a jig. This will hold things in place, which you'll see later, so that you can actually engrave more than one thing. Um, in series, let's say you're doing pens and you're doing a whole bunch, a hundred at a time, and this keeps the position exactly where you need to keep the next pen and the next and the next. So that's very important to have. And the next thing we have here is our support structure that will go onto our main unit, which will have our arm on it. And this basically has our measurement here for our focusing if you're going to be doing it manually which is also quite nice. And this is the same as previous. This will be easy to put together. And second last, we have got our fiber laser arm, which consists of our lenses and where the actual beam is coming from, which will engrave all of our things that we need to. We'll put that aside. As you can see, our laser arm is connected to our main power supply and the bottom of this unit. So you do want to be careful and try not to tug on this on both ends. Otherwise you will have issues. And then we have our last piece over our unit here. And as you can see, last but not least, we have a ruler, which is nicely screwed in there. And these are screws that will be used for our jig arms, like I mentioned prior. As you can see, there's these lovely holes here pretty much everywhere across our bed. It'll only be engraving within this area. And this will allow you to always have the same position when you're engraving multiple things over hundreds or so on. That's very nice to have. Okay guys, now that I've completely taken all the plastic away and I'm ready to now start screwing things together, we're gonna to first start off with our main arm here that's going to support our laser. It's gonna sit like so. So let's quickly unscrew all of these bolts so we can put this one on first. Use this really nice Allen key set that came with it. All we need to do is just take off these four Nothing more at this point. And I can't tell you on how nice it is to have a machine that comes with tools, specifically Allen keys, because Allen keys are not a tool that you always have lying around and it's really nice that you are given a set like this. So now that we've unscrewed that, we can now go ahead and move our main base plate over these four holes and just drop in these screws 
and then tighten it. Now you have to keep in mind that when you're screwing this machine together, our main arm for the laser is going to sit on this pillar. Now if your base plate is not square to the machine, just know that your engraving is also going to be a bit skew if this is rotated incorrectly. So don't screw it down all the way until you've made sure on this side here it is not flush but square, equal distance apart. Otherwise you will suffer later when calibrating your machine. Now that I've got mine lined up, I can then go and tighten them so it's not going to move. Now that I've screwed these four screws in and this is now sitting nice and tight and it's square on that side, we can now move over to unscrew these four screws, two here, two here, and then we are going to go ahead, put this plate on top and screw it in. So let's get to it. Okay, that was very simple. Now we've got our support bracket for our laser arm. We can go ahead, remove the four screws on that and then tighten them onto this. So you don't have to completely take these screws out. All you gotta do is loosen it up so then it can slide and you'll see exactly why in a moment. So when you're putting your arm down, we gotta make sure it's just separate your two screws. So one's on this side, one's on this side. And then same goes for over here because what we're going to do is just go ahead and place this here on top of our bracket make sure the screws are equally separated we're going to just slide it in that one's already in that one's in and this one these two as well and we can just also choose how far we would like to push this arm back and forth it is completely up to you. If you want it to be a little bit more forward, go ahead. Otherwise, you can see where your head's going to be and it might not be exactly where you want to engrave here. So you might want to take it back a little bit, might want to take it a little bit forward. It is completely up to you as this is modular. If you can imagine if we're engraving something that is a little bit bigger, but the engraving portion you want is in this corner, but your arm is mostly in the middle, you could loosen these screws, pull it back a bit until you get to the desired area of which you want to engrave. Okay, so now once you're happy with all those positionings, you just go ahead and tighten the screws. So now that that's now tightened, we can go ahead and lift this up so it's not too close to our base plate. In order to do that, we just need to take our handle we just need to push it sideways and as you can see it locks in place there and if you finish with it you can just push it pull it back up again and place it down but in this case I just want to lift up the arm so we're just going to go ahead and turn it until it is higher than its original position Quick side note, as you can see, there's a cable running from our power supply all the way to our laser head. Now you wanna try and be very careful not to push this up against anything or damage it purely because it's got its data cable with a fiber optic cable. Now that can get damaged very quickly. So try not to bend or damage this cable. Now that we've done that assembly, the next thing we've got here, like we spoke about earlier, is our jig holders what i mean by jig holders is all you got to do is unscrew these screws and you can use either your allen keys or fingers and you're going to position it where you want it so for instance you're doing something at this particular angle you can then go ahead and put your four screws in which they offer you here and that will hold whatever you're engraving in place now that the front is completely done what we've got left here which is offered in the package as well is a book which has our lens cleaning strips very important to do because when you are cleaning the lens underneath you do not want to use anything else but these strips as it could scratch your glass and then give you a negative effect on your engraving then we have got our foot pedal which is very nice i explained this earlier 
we've got our USB to USB cable. Now this will be our data cable between computer and machine. They've included a spare connection for, for instance, a rotary device, which is a separate purchase as well as it can be used to replace your foot pedal connection as well. Last but not least, you've got your main power connection, which goes into the back of the machine and you plug into the wall. We're gonna first start off with our main power connection. Now keep notes of where the pins are and these grooves around the connection, otherwise you'll damage when plugging it in. And once you've plugged it in there, I recommend screwing in this just so that it keeps its connection and then if somehow it gets tugged on, at least it's not gonna rip out. Next is our foot switch. And again, pay attention to where your pins are so that you don't end up damaging them. So go ahead and plug that in. Screw that one on as well. Last connection is our USB data cable which will connect to our computer to send files. Right, now that we've done our assembly and we've got our computer here and we've got these two together, now all we need to do is our comparisons. Now that we've got these two machines side by side, we can actually compare them and our first physical attribute that we're gonna look at is its size difference. Now, as you can see, our new model is all in one. As you can see, we've put the power supply down below, which is no longer to the side and we have got our working surface above it, which this does save a hell of a lot more space if you've got a desk that you are putting this on and you know having the power supply underneath it makes it a lot easier to also maneuver this machine whereas if you have a look at the old one our power supply is off to the side and you still have your working space over here as per normal but again when you need to move these two around the new one simply is going to be a lot easier to move compared to the old one and if we have a look at the two units the arms are exactly the same. The only two differences we've got between our old one and our new one is purely we have got a frame tool on top here. This button allows you to actually see the laser and switch it off when you don't want it so that you can focus without having to go straight to the program and going frame. Then when we're still looking at our head over here, our old one has only got two focusing lasers, whereas this one has got three. It's got two on the outside and one coming from the inside, which in essence gives you a tri-dot laser in a triangle formation, which allows you to focus a lot easier, purely because you'll use your lifting tool to either lift or put it down, and that, again, will change the tri-focus dots to either be closer or further away. When it comes closer and it meets in the middle to become one dot, then you focused your laser. Another thing that they included in the box, which is really nice, is these black cards here. Now, what this is going to allow you to do is focus a hell of a lot easier. And what I mean by that is, let's say for instance, we're engraving and this is metal and we need to focus that laser here, but most surfaces are really shiny and you can't see a red dot. So you can go ahead and put this on your item and then adjust your head until it reaches that one dot focus and not three dots on your material. The last comparison between these two is down to its lenses. Now this particular unit has come with a 220 lens which allows us to engrave 220 by 220 giving us a much bigger field of engraving whereas my old machine came with a 100 lens which only allows you to do 110 by 110 and there's also the much bigger option which is the 300 lens which allows you to do a much larger surface. Now that we've finished comparing these two machines together, the question I have is, surely with a new machine, you should have new software. You're gonna go over to www.cncu.co.za and download your brand new software called Label Mark 5 and its driver so you could use your program. Well guys, that's our comparison between our new and old machine. And the first thing I'll need to do next is to actually physically set this up and put in our parameters, which we'll be doing in our next video. So please keep your eyes peeled 
for that video so that we can set this up the correct way so that we can start having fun in the future. Thank you for watching.